This episode of Talk to Me presents Emily Schultz, ballerina turned interior designer. Emily shares her unique journey and takes us on a trip to Urbanite, where she gives us her design tips and tricks. Don't miss this performance on Talk to Me. Hi, Donna Klein here with Our MTR Life. And we are here at the Heritage School of Design in Portland, Oregon. And I'm here to interview Emily Schultz, who, (laughs) okay, this is a new one, who is a ballerina turned interior designer. So uh, talk to me, how did that happen? Yes, that was quite an interesting journey. So I was a professional ballerina for over 10 years and then the world shut down for the pandemic and I was out of work and I just really started to think about what I wanted to do. And I'd always been interested in real estate. I got my broker's license and I was the buyer's agent, um, did one transaction and realized that it wasn't for me, but I still really loved real estate. So a friend of mine was actually wanting to put his home up on Airbnb. And so he asked me if I would help him. Okay, I have a question. Why would your friend ask you? What was it about you that he thought you'd be able to help him? So he just knew how much I loved real estate and how much I'd been learning and studying and that I was really passionate. And he didn't really know as much as I did. And so he was kind of calling on me for for help and to kind of learn through the process. So we did do it together, um, but I kind of took the initiative and we went through the entire process from getting the permits to actually listing it but I realized that my calling was interior design because when I was doing that actual portion of it, I just really felt a spark and um, I felt like I could have been doing that all day long and would have been very content. It's great when you find your passion that way. It's kind of very serendipitous. You know, all of a sudden you're out of the blue, you're doing something and you go, wait a minute, I love this. And hey, I might be able to make a living out of it. So good for you. It It takes a while in your life sometimes to come across that. Yeah. Um, it did for me as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So you did a uh, Airbnb. I'm assuming it was just successful. <laughs> yes. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Uh, but so you got the bug and you decided, okay, I want to really do this interior design thing. So what, what did you do and how did, how did we end up here? Yes. Um, good question. So I... I got the bug, as you said, and then I decided I was going to see what was available as far as education in the area that wasn't full-time college. Um, So I found Heritage School of Interior Design just by a Google search, which is where we are now, and absolutely loved it. While I was at school, I ended up getting hired to design a restaurant and bar. Okay, okay. All right, so there must be a story here. (laughs) How does one get a job to design a restaurant bar while they're still in design school. How did that come about? Yeah, as we're talking, I'm realizing how crazy this all sounds, but so I was actually in Arizona and I had met somebody, his name's Brian. He's an architect and a developer. I actually met him when I was having dinner with my husband and I just started sharing with him. I'm like, oh, you're a developer, I'm a designer and you know, just networking and He told me he had a job for me. I kind of didn't believe it. And then, you know, long story short, um, I got hired through his company to design a restaurant. Okay, let's go into a little bit more (laughs) detail. So why would this person hire someone he doesn't know to do this, who lives in a different state? Okay, so did he not have the skill? Did he not have the resources or? Yeah, so he, he actually hates the interior portion of it. And he that was going to be something that he was going to have to do himself. And so it was kind of a serendipitous meeting. And, you know, I think that I just really... Um, so you filled a hole that uh-huh. he had in his, in his, in his project. Mm-hmm, exactly. And so it just goes to show you networking is everything. <laughs> so. so did you have to show him a portfolio or any pieces of your work or... Yeah, so when I was actually sitting with him initially, which I didn't even really know that I was networking, um, I was just talking to somebody who we shared something in common with, but I ended up showing him what I did with the Airbnb and he really loved it. So he, um, when, when I knew it was actually serious that I was going to be designing, that I was at least in the running for um, the job, 
I came up with some concepts and shared those with him. He loved them. And then I kind of moved forward from there to uh, communicate with the board. And when you say you showed them some concepts, is this something digital, digital that you did or how do you present that to them? Yes, so mostly everything was digital. In fact, I would say the majority of it was digital because the restaurant was in Wyoming. I live in Portland and Brian, the developer, lives in multiple states. So yes, it was, it was all digital. So how does one design a restaurant bar without being there or even, did you even see the space? So when I came up with the concepts, I had not actually seen the space. I went on Google and looked up the restaurant to see what state it was in. Um, and it was definitely stuck in the 90s. So I just went off of those photos and I also talked to the clients to see what their vision was. How did they want their customers to feel when they walked in the door? So I gathered information and then I used that information to come up with an idea, which the, their vision was industrial, modern, but they didn't want it to be cold. So I came up with a copper bar top to kind of warm up the space and they absolutely loved it. Well, so you, so they had other designers that they didn't like their work, but they liked a student halfway through school. <laughs> yeah, talk about pressure. Um, but well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it, it's definitely an accomplishment. Okay. So, what was that briefly? And I know you could go on forever. What was that process like, uh, designing it and working with these people, being that you were in different states? Um, yes. So, basically, I. I flew in, once I got hired, I flew in, looked at the space. It was one crazy day of going over concepts. And then basically I just picked items and I sent them a couple options for chairs. We were on the timeline. So I just sent them a few options for items. They would pick something and then we'd kind of go from there. So it was actually pretty simple once, once it kind of got down to the nitty gritty. And um, at this point, in, where are you in this point in your schooling? Are you halfway through, three quarters of the way, <laughs> one weekend? Um, I surpassed where I was in school, let's just say that much. Um, but yeah, I, I think in school we had just been going over like mood boards and I was already in budgeting and that kind of thing. So yeah, thank you. So what was the most challenging part of that project? So I was actually very surprised at how much more of a therapist I was about there was more psychology involved. Um, Can you give an example what you mean by that? Yes. So my clients, very, very nice people, but they were very concerned and very high strung and very anxious throughout this process because it was a very big project for them. And so I was really just being the calming force that they needed. And I was there to sort of talk through everything. Um, they really wanted to know about the durability of materials um, since these are high traffic commercial spaces. Um, I also designed the patio, so they would they had a lot of questions to ask me about patio furniture. Like any question about patio furniture, I got you. And why specifically the patio furniture? So I guess Wyoming, that area of Wyoming gets very windy. And so they were concerned about things blowing away. And so, you know, it's, it, it's just funny. A lot of it was, was you know, me doing research, but then also just being able to kind of be that voice of reason. So that was something I didn't really anticipate. Now, so you said, so there was multiple stakeholders, mm -hmm. right? So did they each have their own specific concerns or was it, a, a, were there 10 of them? Were there three of them? Yes, yeah, so I think there are about five. When I flew in, I talked to, I think I maybe had like three or four individual meetings with each of the board members and just kind of talk through the concept. So again, very sales heavy. Like I was in there selling the idea, selling the concept, but also making sure that it was really in their best interest and the best interest of the, um, cause it is a business. So, you know, I was keeping all of that in mind throughout the duration. Okay, so you have stakeholders, you have to take all the concerns and they all have different concerns. You have to make sure you have those concerns, you address them, and uh, then you have to sell them on your concept and. Is that what you mean by heavy, uh, sales heavy? Um, yeah, so I, I guess I would say that when, let's just, let's just, I'll, I'll try to like use a specific example here, but um, let's say for instance, let's use the, the dining chairs for instance. 
Um, you know, I might have had a preference that as a designer, I think, I think aesthetically would work better. I think is more, more modern, more contemporary, fits with the, you know, 2023 style. Um, and they might trend towards something that's older. Uh, it's more of a retired style. So in those ways, I would, you know, try to steer them towards something that maybe design wise, they're a little uncomfortable with, but I know that this is really going to elevate the space. So how, but how do you do that? How do you, do you is it just by showing them pictures or? Um, how, do you, how do you do that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's books on the art of negotiation, right? But I think I was just flying by the seat of my pants at that time. So you have a natural born instinct to be able to influence uh, your stakeholders into making the right decision. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So um, that project is now complete. Yeah, so that project just finished. They just had their soft opening. I haven't been able to get in there yet and get actual photos since it is in Wyoming. Um, but but we'll, there'll be photos. <laughs> yes, we will get to them. Coming up right now. <laughs> you have, did you, are, you, are you flying in to, for the opening or anything or no? Yes, so they will be having a grand opening. And once that is, um, the date is settled for that, I will be flying in and being able to see everybody's hard work. I'm really excited to see it. So the, the photos that I have gotten, it, it looks it looks really beautiful. And um, yeah, it kind of feels like my first, I mean, it's my first commercial project. So it, it's, I definitely want to go see it soon. So your portfolio has some mood images in there. Is that what you presented to those clients? Um, of the bar and restaurant? Yes, okay. yes. Well, so there was one that was a, a concept and then there were a couple other renderings that um, I worked with somebody who does 3D renderings. I worked with him and then he was able to put the design to life um, via 3D. So those that'll, are in there as well. That'll be scrolling right now. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. So we look forward to seeing uh, the final. And uh, what I want to do is go back to short term rental. So I know that you designed a bar. Mm -hmm out of luck, but I think your passion you said was short-term and mid-term rental design. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is my, this is my, my, where my passion really lies because it, it has the, um, design, interior design, but also my, my love of real estate and short-term rentals. Right. So tell me about the, the, the rear friend who you did his mid-term rental. Mm -hmm. You did it so well that you were able to sell yourself to this restaurant people. Tell me that process, how you designed that and what the challenges were. Uh, yes. So um, my friend David, he lives part time in Portland, uh, full time in Seattle. But so we wanted to make sure when we designed, well, when I designed the space, that it was livable and comfortable for him, but that it also would fit a short term rental. So he's he when you say he's living in it, he lives in it part time. Yes. So he, in what area is he the whole house or? Yes. So he, he lives in, he has his, in the basement is where he has like his own bathroom and bedroom down there. That's off limits for guests, um, has a locked door, but, um, the laundry room is down there. So guests will use the laundry down there. Um, but the guests have basically the entire house. So it's a two bedroom, one bath with the laundry downstairs. And what year was it built? It's a, it's a hundred year old home. So it's, and it's in the Williams district. It's a very beautiful home, but that was definitely one of the challenges was keeping the character of the old home with all of its quirks, but then bringing a contemporary charm to it as well. How did you do that? So one of the things that I like to think about when, from a design perspective is when you walk into the space, what is the first impression? Like, how do you want the guests to feel? And, and what, what do they see? So, Thankfully, with this space, when you walk in, you can see the fireplace right away. And the fireplace is this, um, it's white brick. And so to really make that stand out, we painted the wall behind the fireplace black. And so it gives this really nice contrast and makes the fireplace kind of pop. And gives it a, probably a, a cozy type of vibe. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's it's really cozy. And, you know, especially now that the weather's turning in the PNW, it's um, just a nice little place to kind of cozy up by the fire and, and snuggle on the couch. Okay. So did you also help buy the furnishings for this? Uh, everything? Okay. I did. Talk about that. Yes. So with the living spaces, we are sofas from Casserly, which um, they're, you know, a few grand for a sofa, but they're really comfortable and it fit the space perfectly. So we splurge a little bit on the sofa um, and we got a lot of our Wayfair Pro 
um, is where we got some of our dining, our dining table and the bar stools. Um, definitely want to make sure you have accent rugs in the room as well. Um, okay, what about um, the artwork? Oh, yes. Deal with the artwork? Yes, so um, this is kind of cool. I'm not sure if we were going to talk about this later or not, but um, I'll, I'll talk about it now. But so I actually went out and found an art curator and she um, placed art in the home completely free. But what we are doing is um, making the art available for sale for the guests. And then the um, art curator will get paid once the art has been bought. So it's really great because we get to have our place look really amazing with local artists. We also have another revenue stream, but we're also supporting the community. Okay, so this is amazing. All right, so you paid zero for this local artwork and it's displayed for sale. And then if it sells, then you actually get a commission from that. Correct. And what is that process? Do they call a number? Is it, do they scan something? How does that work? Yes, so there are these little thing called NFC tags and they're just like this, they're like little circles and they're really like non-distracting, but you would just place it near an item and then someone can take their phone, scan it, and then it'll direct them to a website where they can purchase the products. And you actually don't need to put the NFC tags everywhere because once they scan it, then they can see all the items for sale. So. We just placed them around um, on some obvious items, but then, you know, this is something that in the Airbnb welcome um, email that it explains all that. It's pretty ingenious. <laughs> <laughs> I have to steal some of those ideas. Yeah, please do. <laughs> okay, so um, when you're furnishing, uh, I just want to know, just to help everybody out, where you go or where are your favorite places to get the things that you furnish in the kitchen, appliances, bedding, sheets, your rugs, and all that. Right. So Wayfair Pro is a good one because you get a discount for that. Um, I do like shopping locally for art and kind of knickknacks when I can. So accessories. Like where? Like where? Urbanite is a, one of my favorites. Um, you can also go to, um, so let's see, we got Wayfair Pro, Amazon. Oh, Amazon is another one that I like to do. So with this uh, short-term rental, we were on a time crunch and I think that's probably most people, they want to get their listing up as soon as possible. So honestly, Amazon is really great, um, especially for accent pillows. That's really going to elevate your space and look, make it look more designer. But um, sometimes you might get an accent pillow. It doesn't actually look as good as you think that it will. Um, and thankfully, Amazon has that quick returns. So that's another good place to go. Now, do you buy one pillow and return it or do you buy like 10 pillows, see which works and then return the rest? Um, so if I felt very certain about a, a pillow, I would just buy it. But I have accent pillows all over that house, especially because there's even a little um, kind of banquette, like built in um, banquette into a bookshelf. And so I wanted to put some pillows on there. So um, I honestly just ordered a bunch of pillows and I just returned, you know, maybe like five or six, but I, I probably ordered like 20 different <laughs> pillows or something crazy. Okay. So. <clears throat> So for those of us that uh, don't have access to some really cool places to shop like Urbanite in Portland, Oregon, what type or what are the regular stores around the area that you, you think would have maybe fashionable or good quality or good taste of decor? Okay, believe it or not, Target is one of my go-tos, especially if you're in a jam. Um, there was a moment where I really needed another side table and uh, went to Target and they had some. So they also have really great um, fake plants. Um, plants are something that are really great to have in your short-term rental. If you can, um, you definitely want to invest in a plant that doesn't need a lot of care, but there, there are a lot of really great fake plants at Target. I mean, it's kind of amazing and it really makes your space feel so much different. So how would you feel about taking a little trip over to Urbanite with us and showing us around and giving us some tips for designing something unique to make your rental you know, stand out. I think that would be super great. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Okay, so we're gonna go over to Urbanite and I'm gonna take you with me. Okay, everybody, we are here at Urbanite. We are in Portland, Oregon, and I'm with Emily Schultz, interior designer, who's gonna give us some tips on designing your short-term or mid-term rental.
We're in the beautiful booth of Modern Myth, and Emily's gonna talk about color palettes. Yes, so one thing that can be helpful if you're struggling to pick a color palette for your space is to look at a piece that you know that you're going to have in your space, for instance, like an area rug here, and then you can reinstate the colors. So if we take a look at this area rug, I have a Sherwin-Williams paint deck here, and you can kind of just lay out and pull different colors from the rug. So like we kind of got like a, a purple color, a little better. I mean, I honestly could probably fiddle for a long time, but I feel like this is like close enough. Um, so yeah, and then another way that you can think about color is in a 60-30-10 rule. So 60% of the room will be your dominant color, 30% your secondary color, and then 10% accent color. So, you know, maybe this more neutral, um, kind of ivory taupe up here would be good for your dominant color. And then, you know, secondary color, this uh, sponge sugar, and then accent color could be this wallflower purple right there. And what would you use for that 10% color? For the 10%? Um, in this instance, I would, I would actually choose this um, almost lilac kind of purple color here. Um, purple, it's funny, there's a whole psychology about color and purple is actually one of those colors that some people love it and some people hate it. So green is a very universally loved color because it's mother nature. So that's a great one to bring into your space, especially if you're afraid of color, green is a really good choice. What if you wanted one, like one or two pieces in your, in your unit and it just wanted it to pop? wanted it to pop so high high contrast is good for that the the best example of high contrast is black and white um, you can actually see here um, the example of high contrast black and white right there um, but yeah having more neutral colors and then um, you know maybe something that has more of like a deeper tone down here will will help um, bring bring more of that pop to your space so from what I understand you said that you can go with like this row Mm -hmm. or any of these rows. So you can also do this row here. Mm -hmm. And if you were really one of the rich colors, you can use the bottom row and that would all work. 100%. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, that was a really, really great tip. I know that I struggle with color and I use Rob. He's my color corrector. So gosh, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. So I just kind of wanted to walk through this area and point out a few things. So. So when you look at this, you're basically, your brain is telling yourself you're looking at two colors, white and gray. However, what makes this area interesting is the texture and patterns that you have going on. So this fabric is called boucle. And so if you, um, you touch it and you look up close, it has almost like little raised, um, it's just like little raised tufts of fabric. So it makes it more interesting. This accent pillow, same thing, like it's one color, but because of the way that it's made, it's, it, it's just way more attractive. Um, and then you've got, again, just like really subtle movement and all of these different pillows. This swivel chair right here is a good example of pattern. So this is um, a smaller pattern um, versus something like this area rug is a very big pattern. So just think about that when you're putting your space together. Like how can I, instead of just getting a black sofa, how can I make it more interesting? This, this fabric will definitely sort of elevate and make your space look more designer. So kind of again, tying into what we just talked about, but pulling in different kinds of fabric and texture. So another way is to bring in a little bit of leather, vegan leather, vinyl. And what makes this piece a little bit more interesting is your seams here. Tufting is another way to make a piece look um, more interesting. Again, you've got the high contrast here with the white and the black. You've got um, a subtle, subtle, um, pattern there, sort of like medium sized pattern. This is rattan. Rattan is very modern and contemporary and very trendy right now. So what's uh, nice about this one is this has a very um, kind of modern look. This is actually a modern styled uh, dining chair and they've upholstered it with some, some velvet and um, give a little pop of color. And again, that's a very nice contrast there. And you can see like these different accent pieces. You can have the 
sort of high contrast, white, black. You've got shiny, which is another kind of texture. And adding these pieces, you know, just on, on tables or um, different spots is just another way to make your place look more professional, more designer, and uh, give it that kind of boutique hotel feel that people are looking for with their short-term, mid-term rental stays. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me like a, a really easy way to spruce up your room or your your unit? Something easy? Yes, plants. Plants are easy in a sense. Um, I am by no means a plant expert, so um, I actually tend to kill a lot of plants. So um, Google is your friend. There are definitely plants that need less care. Um, and for a midterm rental especially, I would highly recommend using a plant that doesn't need a lot of care because you don't know if your guests are going to take care of it. So look for plants that are easy to take care of. And um, there is a site called Easy Plant. Uh, with Easy Plant, you only need to water them once every 30 days, and then they kind of have a self-watering system. You can also get fake plants. There are some fake plants that actually look very real, and uh, surprisingly, Target is one of those places. Um, however, you can just see being in this space with all of this green and Mother Nature, it just really um, kind of gives you this breath of fresh air. And um, so any sort of pottery, even using just pottery without a plant in it is another great way to liven up the space. Um, natural wood um, gives warmth. And um, again, it kind of goes back to that, to our sort of roots and mother nature. So I would think about what is your style um, of design and what's maybe the theme of the Airbnb. So start there. And one thing that is helpful is like, for instance, in the, the Airbnb that I most recently did, it was uh, sort of arts. It was in the arts district. So this art here is locally made art. And if you look a little bit closer at these pieces, you actually have different topography of Portland. So it's kind of a neat way to give people that Portland experience and, um, and, and just also make the space again, feel more designer. Um, these are kind of cute here. Um, people that have lived in Oregon know that Oregon is, is known for mushroom foraging. So um, that's kind of cute. Another thing that you can do is actually put your art for sale uh, in your short-term rental. So um, we can maybe talk about this in more detail later, but you can get little NFC tags and they're just like these small little circles, put them by the art in your Airbnb and then people can scan that with their phone, directs them to a website and then they can actually purchase the art from, from your house. So it's great because you're generating some more rev revenue and you're also supporting the local artists. So. so so, would I buy the art and put it on there myself or how, how does someone pick the art? Can someone do that for me? Yes, so there's multiple options. So you can either purchase the art yourself and then um, sell it that way. Or what I actually did recently was I found an art curator. She actually has a space at Urbanite and I worked with her and she pulled pieces for me. I got to put them in this space for her. Um, I didn't purchase them. She and the artist would get paid after the, um, the art pieces had been purchased and then I would get a percentage of that. So it's a great way to put art in your space for no charge. And again, you're supporting the local community and bringing more, more eyes on, on the different wonderful artists in Portland. So I wanted to give a shout out to a few local designers here at Urbanite. So this is a, co a collaboration between Modern Myth and ADF Upholstery. ADF Upholstery, she is a French upholsterer from Normandy and she can do anything, she's amazing. And this is actually a um, rug from Modern Myth and all of Modern Myth's rugs, as you can look at all of these kind of Moroccan styled boho, they are all ethically sourced. So that can be something that's helpful when you're designing an Airbnb is you can actually 
market your space as locally sourced, um, ethically sourced materials or sustainable as well is also a good way to market your space, especially for Portland. All right, so let me ask you this question. Do you still dance? Um, I do, not as often as I would like to, but you know, I dance in my kitchen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thank you so much uh, for everything that you did and all the tips and the visit to Urbanite. And uh, well, we hope to see more of your work in the future. Thank you. Thank Great, thank you so much. Yep, thank you. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this wonderful interview with Emily Schultz. And she's gonna tell you how you can get a hold of her if you would like to use her design services. Yes, so you can contact me on Instagram. The, um, the link will be um, below. It's MC Design, and I can work with you in any capacity. I'm happy to help. No project is too big or small.